Hello friends, you're welcome to Queen's Fashion World channel today with me. I want to specially thank my subscribers. Thank you so very much. God bless you for your support. And if today is your first time of tuning this channel, you are welcome. Do well to hit the subscription button and also turn on the bell by the side to get an update whenever I upload a new video. So today I'll be teaching how to cut a flounce. You can call it rough wool. How to cut and sew. This same ruffle you're seeing here, you can also use it on your skirt, gown, sleeve. Depends what you want. But on this one, I use it on a blouse. So how I achieve the beautiful flounce here. I'm going to show you how to cut it, see how beautiful it is. So if you want to see how to cut it and how to sew it, please stay with me. So the things I'll be using for this flounce, I have a collar stay here with me, or you can call it collar gum. This uh, stay here has a gum. This shining part has a gum on it. This side has no gum. I have my roller scissors, I have my marker, and I have a brighter satin here. The remaining brighter for the blouse so i'm going to use it how to mark the flounce you can call it ruffle you can call it flounce i'll fold my stair like this i'll fold it like this to create a center line fold it into four like this so that i can create my line at the center so after that i will open it like so you see the lines i can now use the ruler to connect these lines like this let me use chalk I don't want the marker to show on the bridle. Why I'm using a chalk on this part now? Why I'm using chalk to draw this line? I don't want the marker to show on my bridle. So I'm just using chalk for this four corner line. So the next thing to draw now will be my the round shape. I can now use marker on this one. So from this line now, this is the center line. All of these are equal. What I have here is 18 inches. The width and the length, 18 inches. So now that I've finished connecting the line, the square line, I'm going to trace the center, the midpoint of this. Now I can use marker. I'll just mark one inch. You can use one and a half. You can use one inch. Let me use one inch to connect the the circle so now that I've finished marking the circle now I can start anywhere now I can start from this line or start from this line or this one or this one just you have to place it the way you can cover your hand so let me start from this point now I can just curve my hand from this point like this. I see. So you can decide how many inches you want your ruffle to be, but for this one, I'm using a four inches. I'm using four inches. When I finish marking it, I will take away half inch from it. If you want the ruffle to be fuller than this one, you can increase it. So from this point, I will mark my four inches like so. I'll keep marking the four inches and I get to this point now from this point this is the starting point this is where I started the marking from this point I will now bring my tip to this place now to mark another four inches like so now I need to trace my hand from this four inches to connect it to this one I see now I don't need to follow this one here this one is just a guideline for me so I will blend it together like so and keep going with four inches you see the starting point this is where we started the line, where I started marking. So, and my hands did come to this point to end it. So this is where I'm stopping now. I'm going to connect it together very well. 
So I just finished connecting, blending it together. Now this starting point, this is where I stopped the marking. Now we see that I slant this area. So I will also love to slant this area also. I'm starting here to cut it. Or let me cut it for, let me cut it. Maybe I can slant it later. Now this is the starting point. I'm going to cut it like this so that it will not confuse me. Then I will stop there and start cutting it out like this. When you get to this point now, you can now remove this circle here, the one inch circle, remember? You can now cut it out like this. So see what I have now. Now this, this part now, you can slant it. Depends on what you are using the flowers for. I can slant this part now. I will not leave it straight like that. I think I like it this way. So you can use this flounce on a sleeve. You can use it on your blouse neck. You can also use it on a gown, a skirt. So this is my bridal now. It's folded into two. One will be the lining, one will be the main uh, material now I will, i'm going to open this flounce like this i'll trim off half inch i will trim off half inch from it like so i'm not cutting it from this side though. i'm cutting from the inside the half inch so are you seeing now now when I place it like this, it will give me a space. So now I'm going to vomit on top of this bridal. I have space now for the sewing. Now that I've taken off the half inch, I have a space here. I'm going to bomb it. I'll come back to show you. If you check that the space in between the stair and the bridal is not enough, you can remove a little from it because each of these will remain half, half inch allowance to sew it. When you bomb it at the back like this, you know the bridle is folded into two, you can open it like this and just follow the line and also gum it in front. Make sure you smooth it well. Don't allow the collar gun to rumple in front. Just smooth it very well. And there is something I need to show you. When I started gumming it, I start from this. I start it from this one. Just so that I can have space. I first of all push this one this way and gum it. Push this one this way. You know the center has no space, nowhere to push it to. But you can push this one first and gum this one. Just like that. I just follow accordingly before I now gum this center part. So I'm going to cut it out like this. If you're using it on a skirt, gown, depends what you're using it for. You don't need to cut it with a stair, a collar gum. You use the bridal or the fabric to cut it. But because I'm using it on a blouse ruffle. That is why I use a, the color gum to cut it first. So I will cut it out now. So I just finished trimming it out now. I use pin to secure it before trimming it so that it will not shift from a, the lining on will not shift from the main fabric. So see how it is. I secure it with pin. If you want yours to be bigger than this, you can extend it, you can increase it when cutting it. Now, I use four inches to cut this thing. I later trim half inch for space off from it. So what I have here is three inches. So if you want yours to be five inches, you can use a five and a half to cut it. And when you trim half out, for you to have a space to sew it, 
you now have a that five inches left. I want this one to be three and a half inches, the stair to be three and a half inches. So I will go to the machine now and just sew it. I will sew it like this, all round, like this. I'll just follow the same way that I cut it. I'm going to sew it like this. I'll just follow it like this and come out here. And leave this one first now. I'm going to sew the down part of it. Now that I finished sewing it like this, I can now take off all the pins. I can now take off my pins. If you see that, if there is any part that is not well gummed, you can also gum it well, properly. So I can now turn it like this until you finish sewing before you take off the pins, so that the pins will help you. So I can turn it like this now. Let me show you this before I forget. So see my needle did not climb on top of the stair. I didn't saw on top of the collar box. See where I passed this half inch, very close to it. If you climb on top, you have issues. When you turn it to this way, you can't iron it properly. To not be neat. So, so now I just finished turning it now. I will now iron. I will catch the this thing like this, the both of them. And smooth it with iron you have to make it smooth when ironing it you'll be using your hand to push the down part this way make sure you iron it equal so i just finished ironing it now See how beautiful it is. See how beautiful it is, front and back. Now, there is something I want to do here now. I will go to the machine and catch the two mouths like this. I'm going to run it like this to catch this half inch here. The sewing allowance half inch. I'll take it to weaving machine and weave it like this for the work to be neat. I'm going to weave it before I will fix it. So. I just finished weaving the flowers now. See how it is. I weave the this thing with the same color thread. So time to fix it. This is the blouse and to fix the ruffle on. So I will pick it like this. You have to decide where you want it to start. I want mine to start at the under bust. So I will pick it like this. Now this is the center front. I'll place it like so. I will have to secure it with a pin first. I'll use my pin to secure it from the under bust like this now. I don't want the, this thing to I don't want it to climb on top of the pad. So I will just pin it very close to the pad like this. I see now. So see the way I pin the first one like this. I see the inside. See the neck. See where I stop. I have to push it this way. Before the man come like this again, I'll bring it this way again.
you have to check the beauty of it how you want it now we pin one again like this at this point now i see now i can turn it back like this again I can turn it back like this and still pin it very close to this one also So now, I'll bring the fourth one, now one, two, three, this one is the fourth one, from the upper part I will still come down again, come down again. So this last one now, which is the fourth one. I will not allow it to get to the same length here. Yeah? I will just bring it like this up. I just feel one, two. I will bring it up again like so. Now back to the shoulder line. I hope you are seeing me. This shoulder is very thick. So let me check out. Place the back now. Okay, like this is good. So from the shoulder now, I can now cross to the back line like this. I'll just pin it like this to the princess line. I'll just take it to the machine and use the and follow the line that I pin here. Just so it's the way that I pin it. I'll start from the I'll start from the front and sew it like that. The same way that I pin it to the back. Then I will come back to show you the next thing how to arrange it very well. Finish sewing it now. Let me show you. See what I have here. The same way that I pin it. See the line. Now I sew this one like this. The allowance they are facing each other. You see, but this second line now, you can just sew and stop here, cross to this side, and sew this one. I see now, the same way that I pass here. Now this two line. Now this two line. The allowance they are facing each other. I sew it up to here, and because of the back, I have to turn my hand this way. The allowance now face this way, so that when I turn it, it will balance well. So I'm going to wear it on the manicure and show you what to do next. Now I have now. Now I have needle and thread with me here. I want to use it to tack some places to position it the way that I want it. So you just fix the needle single how to tack something. It's single thread and you tie it. Now, see what I want to do. I'll push this one this way first and find a way to tack it to the blouse you I'll just hide the thread. I will not allow it to be too transparent. Then I will pick the bridle a little like this. And tack it together. I just cut the thread out then i'll push the second one see the tacking now i'll push the second one this way again and look for a way to let me pin my needle first let me just tack tie the thread first okay so i can now push it this way Look for a way to 
to pin see where i'm holding it i'll just tack this part now press it down Just to make it close to each other. So I think it's okay now. I can move this needle upward now to the upper part. And also press here down. This time around, I will pass through the back like this. And pass it to the front again like this. Pass it to the back again. Then I will tie it at the back. Now cut the thread again. Okay, this one. So I just finished with this one now. Now for this, I will also pin my thread there. I will just tap the thread. Sorry, because of the pad. This lace is so heavy. So I just tie the thread now. Okay. So I'll look for a way to arrange it properly. I'll push it this way and tack it. See what I'm doing. I'll just pinch a little from this side now. The brider. I'll pinch a little, then I will also connect it to that blouse now I also put it like that again to make it thin one time is not enough Also, could pass it again. Okay, I think it's okay now. Okay, let me cut it out. Okay, so now I'm going to press this upper part down like this. I see now. So I will tack my thread here. The same method that I apply, I'm going to apply it here. I'll push it like this, I'll pass the thread to the back side. And also pass it out, but don't allow the thread to show in front. So I'm passing it through the inside. So I can now tie the thread again here. Yeah. Cut it out. I just finished with this one now. The next place I will tack again will be here. I want here to face this way like this. I think I like it this way. So let me just tack it a little.
Okay, I will just pinch the bride a little. I will not allow my thread to show this side. I will just pinch it because I want it to stay like this. So I will just pinch it a little like this. And press it down this way. I will cut it out. More silk how it is. I just catch it a little like this because I want it to face this way. I want it to face this way. And another place that I will tack again. I'm going to flip. I'm going to flip it over this way and just tack a little. I can turn it like this now. Let me push my thread out this way. Small. But I will not allow it to show like that. Okay, like this now. 